how about fatigue driving? How many people drive when they're tired? I don't, I don't think there's very many people that don't fatigue drive. And I think it's amazing to me when you think about it, the things that people do sometimes when they're, when they, when they're you know, tired. But one of the things I would tell you is it's underrepresented, but, so they don't necessarily ask when you were driving, well, what kind of condition are you in? You know, were you doing okay or do we need it? You know, were you tired or not tired when you do this? So I, don't, I think it's kind of a harder way of trying to adjust or measure this one. Okay, but some estimates could, uh, esti well, some estimates say it could be a contributing factor up to 20 to 24 percent of accidents could actually, or fatalities actually, could be attributed to, to driving tired. So early hours in the morning and the middle of the afternoon and the peak times are the times when you're going to have the most fatigue driving. And, and that's pretty much true, isn't it? Because you can think about the times that, you know, you put in a full day work and then you hit the road and you're out there and you're driving and this is a normal time when, I don't know what it is about in the evening, but I'll be sitting there watching TV sometimes in the evening and it just, I'm out for, for a half an hour, an hour or something like that. Or uh, I can remember different things in which I just don't, you know, I can fall asleep in a, in a moment's notice, and it kind of scares me now because when I think about it, I'm behind the wheel of a car. If I did that while I was driving, that would make me even more nervous. So there are some things that you do, though, that would give you some indications that you're getting kind of tired, that you're reaching that fatigue part. You start yawning. You start daydreaming. You're not focused in on what's going on. How many people do zone driving? You're driving from one side of town to another side of town or down the road or something and you get to a particular point and all of a sudden realization kicks in and you go, how did I get here? Boy, I hope all those stoplights I went through were green because I certainly don't remember going through them. So I think that a lot of times we'll have that or people wander in lanes. You know, they'll just be kind of, all of a sudden you're like, oh, wait a minute, I'm in the wrong lane and, and have to pull over or pull into the right lane. Your reactions unintentionally, you either speed up or slow down. And I, I have to be honest, there, there's a reason I use cruise control. Because I have a hard time following through with this anyway. But if you guys think about it, you're on the gas, you're, you know, you're trying to maintain a speed, you go up over a hill, you're, you know, whatever the case is. But if you're not paying attention to your speed, you might look down and you might go, 30 miles on the interstate, oh my goodness, I gotta pick up the speed. Or, in some cases, it might go the other way, in which the fact that you're doing 90 to 100, and you go, whoa, 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 no speeding tickets here, right? But there are things that happen when we start to get fatigued that we're not paying attention to, and I think it's important to talk about. How about when your eyes feel stiff? Your eyelids start getting a little heavier. How many people have done a half blink? Oh, come on. You know what I'm talking about, right? You naturally blink, but then this half blink, you only do half the process. A couple seconds later, oh my goodness, that was scary. You know, all of a sudden your eyelid comes back up, but it's a half blink. It doesn't happen right away. I think anything that you talk about, I think these are the things that kind of worry you about, you know, driving when you're tired, the different things that happen with this. So what are some of the things that you guys do to try not to do fatigue driving? So try and wake yourself back up. What do you do? Yep, you can turn on the air conditioning. You can roll down the window. Now, I did that when I was driving. I w we were living in, we just got transferred to South Dakota. I was coming up here to pick up my wife. And I put in an eight-hour day, and I'm going to make it there no matter what. So I rolled down the window, and I'm telling you, by the time I got to Deer Lodge, I was an ice block. You know, it took me two days to get warmed up after that one. But how many times we do silly things like that to try and wake ourselves up? So what are some of the other things you do? I know that some people crank up the radio. There goes your hearing, by the way. Sunflower seeds, eating something. Now, hopefully you've got that down to the point to where you don't need to, you know, be doing a lot of stuff with your hands and that, but you can do a lot of the, you know, automatic where all you have to do is, it's kind of like a spit cup really, isn't it? I have seen some people eat sunflower seeds. They just put it in shells and all go through their system. But 
I think it was a lesson in which they hadn't quite figured that one out all the way yet, you know. So I think there are some things that when you think about some of the things that you do while driving. So how many people use energy drinks? Oh, yeah, come on. And I, I have to tell you that if I'm on edge and I need just a little bit of a jolt to stay awake, I will use a five-hour energy drink. But I have to tell you, my granddaughters get after me about that something fierce if we're on a long trip. Papa, don't grab that. No, 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 you don't need that. I said, ah, you know, I'm just a little bit on edge. But I have also proved to myself that if I'm extremely tired, if I'm past that point, I don't care how, many, how much energy drinks you pump me full of. If I need to sleep, I need to sleep. And there's not any kind of energy drink that's going to keep me from falling asleep. You know? How many people seen them, people slapping themselves? You know, they'll be slapping themselves in the face or pinching themselves. They arrive at their destination all bruised up. Think of all the things that we do though, that put us in those situations. So here's, here's a story for you guys. So I, you know, when I joined the service and my first permanent duty station was Fort Worth, I talked about Carswell. <coughs> Took me, I, when I got out of tech school, I flew home, spent 10 days at home. During that 10 days, I bought my first little car, which was a, a Toyota Celica. It was a 72, I think. So, you know, I got, I, I got my car and now I'm going to head down to Texas. It took me two days to make the trip from Pueblo, Colorado to Fort Worth. And that was in January, okay? So I get down to Fort Worth, and in February, we had our first three-day weekend. Hoo-hoo! I'm going home. I want to go home. I was, you know, I was a homebody. I wanted to see my family. I wanted to see my friends. I'd been only three weeks or four weeks since I last seen them, but I had to go. So, and at that point in time, the military didn't have, you know, mileage range. They let us go as far as we wanted to go without having any problems. So I got in the car, and I took off, and I had worked an eight-hour day. Now, from Fort Worth to Pueblo is 690 miles. So, and I'm going to make this trip a round trip in a three-day weekend. And I can't tell you how many of those three-day weekends I had used when I was in the service to make the trip. But I decided I was going to do it. So, I don't know how many people know the layout of Colorado, but Colorado, everything's kind of, the major stuff is all on the eastern front. As far as, you know, you got Fort Collins and Denver and Colorado Springs, Pueblo's, right down below Colorado Springs, but right at the southern end of, of Colorado on I-25 is a town called Trinidad, Colorado. How many people are familiar with Trinidad? All right, well, they do two things in Trinidad, or two things that I knew that Trinidad did when I was growing up. One is sex change operations. No, seriously, they did sex change operations down there. And the second thing was is there was an active group of witches down there. Now, you guys are saying, well, you know, that I'm telling you that I even had a teacher when I was in high school tell me that they had, you know, there's witches down there, they're practicing. So I went over Raton Pass, which is the pass between Colorado and, and New Mexico, and I come in, and of course, there's, there's Trinidad. There is no way I'm pulling off on the side of the road around Trinidad, Colorado. I don't even, the whole time I drove that route, I never stopped in Trinidad to get gas, by the way. Trinidad was a non-stop for me, you know. That was just get past that as, as fast as I possibly could. So I passed up Trinidad, and I'm headed to Pueblo. And I woke up a little bit later after that. Now, notice I didn't say I pulled off the side of the road, because I woke up later, and I was driving over sagebrush and cactus and stuff. And I was, you know, all of a sudden the car's doing this, and I'm like, oh, boy, now the adrenaline starts flowing. So I stopped the car. Got out with my flashlight, about eight feet in front of the car was about a 10-foot gully. So it was like, boy, I missed that bullet. Then you get out, and it took me, I swear to you, 15 minutes to find the road. I didn't know which side of the road I went off on. So I'm out there trying to find, you know, it's got to be here somewhere. I assumed it was going to be more to my left than it was, you know, further this direction, but I didn't know. So you can imagine the rest of the trip in, the adrenaline kept me flowing pretty good after that. But here's one of the things that I learned. If I was extremely tired, I would pull off to the side of the road. I'd lock the doors, but I would just pull off to the side of the road, wherever that may be, and I'm going to catch a cat nap. So when I started to work for the Department of Labor and Industry, one of the things that happened was I was with my boss, and we were driving from Great Falls down to Helena, and we stopped at the Dearborn exit. I don't know how many people know where that's at, but anyway, we stopped at the Dearborn rest stop. We got out, and the boss comments, he says, 
That's why we have problems with so much of the public about state employees because there was a state rig and the employee and, and you know a state employee is behind the wheel and he's taking a nap there at the truck stop. And he's like, that gives us all a bad name. And I was like, okay. So I let that sit for about a week before I finally had to approach the boss and I said, look, we got to talk about this because I want you to tell me what you expect me to do because I have to tell you that if I'm tired, if I didn't get enough rest the night before, if I'm really extremely tired, I'm going to pull off to the side of the road and I'm going to sleep. Now, if you don't want me to do that, you need to tell me that that's not what you want to have happen because that's the only thing I can think of that is going to get me back on the road. I have to sometimes just maybe a 15, 20 minute power nap will work, but sometimes I have fallen, you know, I had um, on my way from Great Falls to, or not Great Falls, but from Fort Worth to Pueblo, I pulled off to the side of the road and took an hour nap. I woke up, looked around, couldn't understand where I was at. I couldn't get my thought process to work, and I went back to sleep. I said, I'll deal with it in another hour or two when I can get my head clear. So sometimes I just need to pull off to the side of the road. So he eventually said, all right, you got me. You, you do what you need to do, you know. Just try not to be too conspicuous about it. Just, but he said, you know, if you have to pull off the side of the road, pull off the side of the road and take a nap. And that's what I do now, okay? So I think that's the best thing that you can do, but I think that there's um, some other things that I want you to think about for your employees is I want them to plan ahead. How many miles are they gonna be driving? How often should they be stopping? At least every two hours, shouldn't they? Now again, I mentioned that I was an A to B guy, right? I get in the car, and if there's no reason to stop, I'm driving until I hit my destination. Well, I found out that now that I've gotten older, that doesn't necessarily work, because if you spend eight hours behind the wheel and you don't take a break, have you guys ever had to unbend yourself from the car? So I have found that it's, it's actually better that I plan stops in between. So like I'll get in the car here and I'll stop at Bonner and then I'll go a little bit for, maybe I'll stop in Garrison for, for a short bit and get out and stretch before I'll go over, you know, up to McDonald Pass and over the top and into, into Helena. But I plan to take a break about every two hours so that I can kind of get out and stretch. If nothing else, you know, use the rest stop or whatever. But, you know, if I'm feeling tired, I'm going to pull off to the side of the road and sleep. And I think it's important that you guys discuss that with your folks as well. It's better for them to arrive late and alive than it is to push it and end up in a situation that you don't want to see them in. Okay? But I think it's important to have that discussion.